On this episode of the Whiskey Tornado, we review Old Forester 150th Anniversary Batch 3. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Whiskey Tornado. I'm your host, Lance. Today, I'm excited to bring you a bottle I never thought I would see. I got really lucky and got a bottle of the 150th Anniversary Batch 3. Uh, for those that don't know, Old Forester 150th Anniversary is one of three batches released to celebrate the date in which founder George Garvin Brown sold the first bottle of bourbon. Uh, master distiller Chris Morris selected 150 barrels for this bottling and at maturation several had lost all its liquid due to angel share. Master taster Jackie Zykin batched the three bourbons, each of which are unfiltered and bottled at barrel strength. Batch three consists of 46 barrels and is bottled at 63.4% ABV. Before we get into everything, let me quickly explain our scoring system here on the Whiskey Tornado. We have seven categories. Five categories we rate zero to 1.5 being average. We have two categories, appearance and availability, that are handicapped. Uh, we don't want those carrying the same value as the taste and what's actually in the bottle. At the end, we add all those up. Point anything three or better is bar worthy. You're safe to go buy some. You will be happy with what you purchase. Anything four or better is bunker some. So you have some later in life when you can't find them on the shelves anymore. All right, so with all that being said, let's first get into our two handicapped categories. The first category being appearance. So as you can see guys, the appearance is pretty good. Um, I don't know how much I'm thrilled with it. I love the darker colored bottle, uh, you know, as a throwback. It's 150th anniversary, it comes in a nice tube. All of that's great. So I guess it's better than average. We're gonna put it at a 0.7. This is handicapped, so we are gonna divide by two and add that to our availability score. Okay, as far as availability goes, this is impossible to find, almost impossible to find. I got very lucky and a manager I was speaking with at Harvest Market here in Champaign told me he had a bottle, asked me if I wanted it. So if you're out there, Ray, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to try and review this bottle. And for all of you that are local, stop by Harvest Market and make sure you check out their bourbon selection. They have so many great bottles that other places in town don't have. As far as the score on availability, we have to really knock it. It is a 0.1 because I was just super lucky to find it. So you've got to divide by two, it's a 0.05. We add that 0.05 to 0.35 on the appearance and those two categories together get a score of a 0.4. All right, let's move on to the nose. What is actually in the bottle? That's the good stuff. And this does not disappoint. Oh my goodness. It is bananas. Uh, it's condensed milk if that makes sense um, we used to get like plantains and we would roast those on the grill and then we get the canned condensed milk which is like super sweet and you'd pour that on the uh, on the plantains and then just scoop it out and oh my gosh drizzle it with caramel that is what I get here it is fantastic it's bananas it's that sweetness rich super super rich tons of vanilla tons of caramel Velvety if you I mean if you're somebody that can smell texture This just smells velvety to me. It smells heavy. It's it's so great I mean, it's as almost as good of a nose as you can get I'm gonna put the nose at a point nine Okay, moving on to the palate. Cheers, everybody mm. 
Oh man. Oh, I don't actually, I did not look up how old this is, but I get right away like this huge surge of cherry banana and the cherry uh, I'm getting a little bit of barrel char where I almost get clove notes and it's not to the point of medicinal uh, if you guys have ever had wild turkey 17 year bottled and bond I think that sat in those barrels so long that the char became medicinal almost like medicinal where you'd get with like peated scotches this this just falls short of that it's cherry and it turns to clove, but without being medicinal. And it's super thick and there's wonderful like banana notes. It's that bananas foster that you love from Brown Foreman products like Old Forester. It's tons of brown sugar. It's maple syrup. But those clove notes are strong without being medicinal. And I absolutely love it. It is so, so fantastic really coats the mouth. We're going to give it a 0.9 on the palate. All right, moving on to our new category and that's body. I feel like it's important to talk about the body. How thin is it? How thick is it? How heavy is it? How oily is it? And this, this just checks off all the marks. It is thick. It's oily. It's heavy. It's dense. Mm, mm -mm. You can tell all that time in the barrel and the angel sherry I was talking to you about. It just really condensed those bourbon flavors. This is so great. I'm gonna give the body a 0.9. It doesn't get much better. All right, moving on to the finish. You know, if, if I had any knocks, I guess it's the finish, but it's still better than average. It's still really good. Just so much barrel spice, but it sits on the front of your tongue and almost the mid. Um, it doesn't really, well, now I'm getting tons of hug. I'm gonna change my score on finish because as I started to say that I started getting all those like banana cherry flavors <clears throat> mm, so good that finish is still going man it's pretty long it's pretty long it's good tons of barrel spice uh, I'm gonna give it a 0.7 on the finish all right moving on to value this is a hundred and fifty two dollar bottle so before I score it on value, I want to taste test it against Old Forester Single Barrel. Now the Old Forester Single Barrel I have is a, is a Benny's store pick. This was $80, but it's 130 proof. And the Old Forester 150th is 126.5. So the question is, is this twice as good as this? Um, you know, I don't know. So let's taste test it real quick and then I can give you a value and then we can decide you know, what the score is. Now, as far as the nose goes, I mean, it's a toss up. It's 50-50. It's the nose on both are really good. This, uh, this smells a little bit sweeter. The Old Forester single barrel smells a little bit sweeter. All right, let me go in for the taste on 150th and then we'll go single barrel. Gosh, that is such a fantastic bottle. Mm. If you guys ever see that, pick it up. Don't even question it. What's the most I would pay for that bottle? Probably, I'd probably pay 200 bucks for it, to be honest with you. I say that before I taste this. Oh yeah, doesn't even compare. And I love this bottle. This pick of Old Forester Single Barrel, it's fantastic. It's a little more cherry forward, but definitely more thin. Definitely doesn't carry the weight of the 150, 150 anniversary. Uh, and <clears throat> fights me a little bit more. I don't know if it's quite as put together as the 150th. And I love this bottle. But tasting it side to side with the 150th, um, it, the 150th really shines. Wow, that's a that's an eye opener. Well, let me go. This first, then that, to give it a, sh a fair shake. All those good. <laughs> I used to think this was so viscous and full and heavy. And then having it next to this, I'm like, wow, what do I know? Good Lord. Man, that is fantastic. Hmm. 
it's all about context guys and if you don't a b compare your whiskeys you're missing out because this was um you know one of my favorite bottles i have a lot of good bourbon this is one of my favorite bottles and i always thought it was super heavy dense thick but tasting it next to the old forester 150th it just goes it's just another level so is it worth tw twice as much yeah i i actually think so i really do um and, I, and doing this review, going into this review, I thought I was going to say, no way is this bottle worth twice as much as this bottle. But I would pay 150 I paid 152 for this bottle, and I do not feel bad about it. I would pay up to 200 for this bottle and feel very good about it. So if you see Old Forester 150th Anniversary Batch 3, do not hesitate to pull the trigger. What a fantastic bourbon. All right, guys, for the last part of today's episode, let's review a comment left on my last video of Old Grandad 114 review. This left by Cater Mayfield. Uh, he said, thanks for reminding me to hit this bottle. It has been a while. I agree. Insane value. I don't bunker anything this available and this consistent. That said, I do try and bunker a few bottles of Rare Breed just to have different batch codes. One of the funniest secondary listings I have ever seen was someone trying to sell a bottle of Old Grandad 114 for $300, claiming it was lot one, the very first lot. I know what I have, don't try to lowball me. Of course, all bottles say lot number one. Another fun fact, in the books, not the movies, Old Grandad was the bourbon James Bond would specify when ordering an Old Fashioned and Diamonds Are Forever when Sean Connery orders Old Fashioned, he uses Old Grandad. I did not know that, very cool fun fact. Um, as far as bunkering goes, guys, the, the way I rate bunkering, and, and uh, Cater Mayfield, thank you for the comment. Really appreciate you. Appreciate the support of the channel, brother. Um, I look forward to providing you guys many more reviews. Uh, as far as bunkering goes, the category bunkering, I just look at it as if something happened to the distillery, if it got bought, if the juice changed, uh, you know, a million things could happen. Would I want that bottle down the road? Would I want that bottle 20 years from now to share with my kids or share with my son-in-laws or whatever? And, and if so, then I bunker that bottle. I don't care about the nostalgia. I don't care if it's Weller or Rip Van Winkle. Do I personally think it's a fantastic bourbon? And what happened if that distillery went away tomorrow? Would I want some of those stored away for 20 years from now so I could share and tell stories about how good this bourbon was and what is behind it? Because we never know what's going to happen with these distilleries. Uh, in re recent review I did, um, you know, Lux Row was just bought by MGP and it's no longer going to be Heaven Hill Juice, so we never know. So even if a bottle is readily available, I think it can be bunker worthy. I hope that helps uh, explain my bunker system. Any score over four better is a bunker worthy thing, uh, is, a, is a bunker worthy bourbon. Um, so as far as the score for batch three, Old Forester 150th anniversary, I almost forgot to give you guys a score. It is a four point, uh, let's see, on the value I got sidetracked. I'm gonna rate the value of 0.7, even at $150, because it's it's that good, it's really, really good. So th that brings Old Forester 150th to a 4.5, making it 1,000% bunker worthy. If you see this bottle, don't hesitate, grab it. Hope this helps you guys figure out what bourbons to buy and what ones to leave on the shelves. Until next time, cheers everybody.